Okay, so firstly, let me introduce myself. Uh, this, this is quite important. Uh, I'm like a perpetual traveler. So I don't have any residency in uh, European Union. I decided to change my residency to, to Panama just because I want to stay, to stay be compatible with the, with the traditional organization, but technically I don't need any residency in any country. Uh, a few years ago, probably five years ago, I completely switched to crypto. So instead of using like traditional bank accounts, uh, I close almost all my bank accounts. Still, I have one company that uses bank account, but most of my companies, they are like completely in crypto. So, uh, and I started to uh, analyze how it is possible to survive in the, in the world when you, when, you, when you cannot make traditional banking transaction and you are completely full on crypto. And what is quite interesting, and I started to write this presentation maybe two years ago, and the funny thing is that like every six months, I have to completely rewrite this presentation because everything is changed. Many services are canceled or closed. There are some new services. So the thing is, if you want to survive completely on crypto, you really need to, to check what is just happening, you know. So this may be a bit complicated. Uh, regarding my, like my big background, uh, I'm like a computer hacker, so I have two, uh, two companies focused on IT security. We do penetration testing, hacking. Also, uh, we do uh, one company, it's bug bounty, bug bounty program company. So it's something like Uber for hackers. So we are trying to connect uh, the hackers with the, the customers. But what can be important for you, I'm one of the founder of Parallel Paralne Polis in Prague, Paralna Polis in Bratislava, and also one of the organizer of HCPP. They used to call me like ideologist. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, maybe when you visit Paralne Polis, you can feel that it's not like a normal organization. So we try to prom we try to promote the idea of like absolute freedom. Uh, that's what exactly what we what we love. So. Firstly, before I'm going to explain you how it is possible to switch from traditional banking system to, uh, to crypto, let's analyze why do we need privacy. So uh, I decided to summarize four different reasons. So the first reason is that in many countries, for example, in like my home country, Slovakia, there is like a cash ban, which means that in Slovakia, you cannot use cash above 5,000 euros as a physical person, as a, uh, as a legal person like company, and 15,000 uh, euros as a, as a physical person. What basically means that, for example, I want to buy a car from you as a physical person, and if, if the transaction is above 15,000 euros, and we use cash, it's a criminal act, and we, we, we will end up in jail. So it's really, it's really, it's really terrible. Um, so the thing is, uh, so, so it means that the governments, they f thanks to this legislation, they basically force you to use, uh, to use bank accounts and to use traditional banking system. And, the, and one of the reasons why they force you to use traditional banking system is that they just want to spy you, and they want to track you, and also they want to control your transaction. So it also means they want to block your transaction in case they think they are suspicious, for example. So uh, we should be aware that uh, if you do any like transaction online, so as, as I mentioned before on panel discussion, you want to buy some porn, this information uh, about the given transaction is known to, uh, to your credit card companies like Visa, MasterCard, to your bank, and also to your government. So many different institutions know basically all your financial transactions. And also, we have a lot of so-called protective regulation, like KYC, AML. And all of these regulations, they basically lead to financial dictatorship. I'm going to explain you why. Uh, also, if you do business, out, like if you're like a European company, or you do business out of Europe, Union, so for example, you try to send money out of the European Union, you probably know that it's really a lot of, it's really complicated. So, for example, when you want to send money above $10,000, you have to provide your invoice to, the, to your bank. 
And if you want to send money above $50,000 uh, $50, out of the European Union, you have to provide the like, all agreements with the customers, a lot of, uh, a lot of things. Otherwise, the bank can st stop, can freeze your transaction or can freeze your uh, bank account. And it will take you really days or weeks just to, uh, to, unblock, un to unblock your transaction. Okay. Third reason is that, you know, behind these credit card companies and uh, behind these uh, banks, there are still people. And all these people and all their technologies they use are vulnerable to hackers. So we can see there were many incidents in the past when uh, bank employees misuse the, the sensitive information. And for example, and not only bank, but also organization responsible for KYC or AML. I wrote an article, this is a link to article. It's called, called, uh, it's called like how KYC AML poses a serious threat to your privacy and should not be used at all. And the thing is that in these days, on some specific dark markets, you can, you can, you can buy like a thousand profiles, like profiles, KYC profiles of existing people, yeah, including their passports, like scan passport, scan proof of address, um, scan photo. So the thing is that, like, does it make any sense to use KYC or, or AML if I can buy identity of any person on the dark market for $15? And the price, okay, the, the price is $45, but the uh, $15, $15 is the price of one document. So if I can, if I can buy on dark, dark market identity of any person, it doesn't make sense to use. Uh, it doesn't make, it make sense to use KYC AML at all. At least I'm, I'm looking to this like a security expert. <clears throat> uh, uh, also, there is something what is called OECD uh, uh, tax agreement, which basically means that all countries are, uh, they agree to share information about taxes of all their citizens. Another interesting thing, I'm one of the big critics of GDPR because uh, Especially, you know, I, I used to call it like a uh, European schizophrenia, because according to GDPR, uh, you should really protect uh, sensitive information of all European citizens. For, so, for example, especially GDPR recommends to use both anonymization and pseudonymization at the same time. But at the same time, another EU legislation prohibits people to use anonymous prepaid cards anonymous SIM cards, anonymous transactions. So the thing is, what the fuck, you know, like... <laughs> so so, so because, because many mob, mobile operators, that, like for example in Czech Republic, they sell anonymous SIM cards. Also in Austria, two years ago in Austria, also in the Czech Republic, it, it was possible to buy anonymous prepaid cards, but there, it's not possible anymore because of threat of tourism. So, so the thing is that at the one side, uh, we have GDPR, and GDPR recommends to not to gather any sensitive information. On the other hand, uh, the bank cannot issue like anonymous prepaid cards. The mobile operator cannot, uh, cannot issue uh, anonymous SIM cards. So yeah, I would call it like really some kind of schizophrenia. And the last reason why do we need financial freedom? Because it's a really effective protection against seizure of your assets by the government. Because at this time, the government can freeze your bank account, take all your money, take your physical cash or gold, take your property, suspend your business. By the way, this is really happening now in the Czech Republic. For example, in Czech Republic, well, this guy, this guy, I have, a, I have him on, on my t-shirt. His name is uh, Babish, and he's Czech uh, prime minister and also one of the biggest, one the richest guy in Czech Republic and also the, the mafia boss. And what is doing this guy, because he was the Ministry of Finance in Czech Republic, he basically exploited or misused Czech's tax office to, to, to destroy his competitors. And this was happening. So, so uh, in Czech Republic, the government has destroyed many innocent companies just by freezing, freezing their, their accounts. So this company, they started to, uh, to sue the, the Czech government or Czech tax office, and they win after, and they, and they win, uh, and they won after, for example, one year, but during this period, because they, can, they couldn't use bank accounts at all, they bankrupted. So, uh, and it, this wouldn't happen if they used crypto instead of bank accounts. 
Okay, so one important thing to realize is that real digital privacy start with the protection of your financial transaction. So uh, firstly, I'm like a privacy extremist. I like Bitcoin, but you should be aware like when you use normally Bitcoin, Bitcoin is not anonymous, Bitcoin is pseudonymous. So Bitcoin at this time still doesn't have property which is called fungibility. But fortunately, we have truly anonymous cryptocurrencies. Probably you know all of them, Monero, Zcash, Zcoin, particularly that like project which is still under development. And also in progress, there is something with what is called ZK, ZK DAI, which is like an encrypted DAI. But the most stable project in these days and most used project, and it's a secondly, it's the second most used cryptocurrency in dark markets, is definitely Monero. So my, uh, I use daily Monero. Uh, these, are, these, these are some technical details. You should be aware of that if, if we switch to Bitcoin Lightning Network, we, uh, we can get a lot of privacy thanks to only unrooted micropayments. And also, uh, if, you, if you use Bitcoins, and especially with the combination of dark markets, it's really necessary to use Wasabi Wallet. I consider Wasabi Wallet to be the most like, secure and privacy ever wallet in these days. Okay, so um, the thing is that if you use like a, any centralized crypto exchange, I mean centralized crypto exchange means that there is some like specific company behind this crypto exchange and this company uh, is regulated, you have to follow AML KYC regulation. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to explain you how it is possible to stay in crypto and use fiat instead of KYC AML process. And as I mentioned before, KYC database of Bitrex, Poloniex, Bitfinex, and Binance was hacked and sold at the black markets for $55, uh, $45 for scan of passport plus proof of address and plus your selfie. So the thing is, if, even if you want to register at, at these centralized crypto exchanges, you can use store and you can, you can, you can use verification on some random ID you bought on the crypto market, dark market for $45. $45. So uh, many people, because of this, they started to use local bitcoins, but also local bitcoins, uh, they st started to enforce uh, KYC AML. For example, I spent a lot of time in uh, South America, in South America and Colombia. Crypto exchanges are officially prohibited, but everybody, everybody uses local, local bitcoins. Also, there is a similar project which is called Local Monero. One of my favorite projects, favorite decentralized crypto exchange that supports fiat is definitely, is definitely Bisca. And the cool thing about uh, Bisca is that, uh, as I explained yesterday uh, to Max, uh, you can use Revolut and N26, and you can use like random email address where you will, come, um, you will associate with the Revolut account, and you can directly, uh, you can directly can receive bitcoins or sell bitcoins and, re and receive Revolut or N26 transactions. Also, another interesting decentralized crypto exchange is called HODL HODL, which is uh, quite it's a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin exchange, which does not, uh, does not hold funds. And at this website, you can find the comprehensive uh, list of decentralized crypto exchanges. One of the problem is that their liquidity is probably very, very, very low to use. And also, especially in the Czech Republic and Slovakia, you have like hundreds of Bitcoin ATM uh, machines. So for, for about 33% for about fee, you can change your cash to fiat or, or cash to crypto or crypto to cash. Okay. So, so firstly, uh, if, you want, if you don't want to use a bank account, you should be able to pay uh, to make separate transactions. So there are multiple ways. First, I'm going to explain uh, the ways that require uh, KYC AML. So one of very po popular project is called Bitfala. Uh, it's a Berlin startup. Unfortunately, they have really strict KYC AML process. So for example, they requires, requires uh, a video call. Also, now it's pretty complicated to use it because firstly, you have to top up your crypto then uh, uh, to your like, an online wallet, which is not very secure. Then you need to change Bitcoin and make separate, uh, separate payment. What basically means you have to do two time-consuming and expensive BTC transaction. And also they require tax ID. This is quite uh, interesting because 
uh, I, wa I wanted to use it, but there was no Panama because my like tax country is Panama. So I asked him what, what country should I use and they told me like use Slovakia, but I, I, I wrote them, I'm sorry, but I'm not Slovak tax citizen and that it was the end of our communication. And also, uh, I think in Latvia, or Lithuania, there is like project called Mr. Tango. Uh, it's basically just a SEPA account that can be top up with the BTC. But when you want to send money to, to Mr. Tango, it's quite expensive. It costs 1% uh, or at least 0, 0, 0,025 BTC. It's quite expensive, but w the cool thing is they should be like a crypto friendly. So when you do, what you can do, you can make direct SEPA withdrawal from your Cracker, Bitstamp, or any centralized crypto exchange directly to Mr. Tango. But I'm going to explain you how to survive, survive without using these centralized services. Okay, and uh, fortunately, there are some Bitcoin SEPA gateways that don't require KYC ML, but all of this is valid only for transactions uh, which are less than 1,000 euros. So Bitbill is a, it's a Dutch project, really interesting. So, uh, it seems to be like completely anonymous, so they require no KYC ML. It's a, a, bit exp a bit more expensive. But the cool thing is this is probably one of the best way how you can pay your bills. Another project uh, in, from Prague, it's called Simplecon EU. You can, you can uh, use Simplecon EU to pay, uh, to make any SEPA payment and also uh, payment inside of Czech Republic, for example. And they also don't require any KYC ML uh, when you plan to make transaction less than 1,000 euros. Another interesting Czech project, or the best way, like in Prague and Bratislava, we have Paral Polis or Paral Nipolis, and we have really big communities. So, for example, we have like hundreds of people around our, uh, um, around our place. So, we have like a internal communication channels, and when we are selling or buying crypto, uh, we, do that, we, we do that inside of our community without like any checks using cash. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So uh, another cool service you should definitely check is a Finnish project, which is called Lamium.fi. You know Lamium? Raise your hand if you know Lamium. Uh, it's a super project. I really like it. It's a decentralized wave of invoice payment, and it and it doesn't require any KYC, any AML, and even no registration. So everything you have to do, just upload your invoice, send uh, bitcoins to some specific address, and, and, and for 2%, someone from the big community of their verified payer will just pay your invoice from his or her local personal bank account. So this is super cool. I really like it. So, so if, you, if you want to pay any invoice, you don't need to have really any, any bank account because you can, you can just use this service and some, some, for example, in my situation, random people in Europe Union pay my invoices. So every invoice is paid, is, is paid by someone else, but I don't care. Okay, and it works. And they charge only 2% uh, from the invoice. Okay. If you use like Bitcoin debit cards, you should be aware you have no privacy at all. In the past, like most of Visa and MasterCards, prepaid Bitcoin cards, they were issued by the company which was called Wavecrest. But unfortunately, uh, they, they had some conflict with the Visa and MasterCard and almost all these Wavecrest debit cards were blocked. So as I know, in these days, you have only uh, two, like a Bitcoin debit card, Bitvala and Varix. Var Varix is quite cool because it supports a lot of shit coins, including DAI. So I use it with a combination die, for example. But you should be ever, there, there are no anonymous debit cards at all in any country, probably. Uh, and the reason is, of course, because of threat of tourism. So the thing is, if you want to use debit card or credit card, and if you want to have any like privacy, uh, the best solution is just create your offshore company with a nomina, nomina director and ask for your, uh, open the bank account somewhere and ask for the uh, debit card 
to, which, which will be written to your off, uh, offshore nominee director. The thing is, you cannot use, uh, you, cannot, you, you can use this card probably to pick up the cash from ATM machine or for online payments, but you cannot use it for po post-terminal payments because m in most shop, physical shops, they can ask you to check your physical uh, identity or like your ID. Okay. Another option, these are not Bitcoin debit card, but may be very useful, especially for uh, perpetual travelers, uh, are the two cards, Revolut and N26. So these are like a normal payment card, but I, I really like Revolut for, sorry. I really like Revolut because of, uh, I spend a lot of time, for example, in Europe and also in South, South America. And what I can do, I can make a regular payment. So for example, I can pay my invoices monthly in Colombia, in Argentina, in Slovakia, in Czech Republic, and everything at the same time. So I, I'm not aware that there is like any other bank uh, which is capable to, to provide me uh, such service, like, like be able to pay like anything in any country in the world so, so easy. But of course, these cars are not anonymous. And also, there is like a German competition. Revolut is like Gibraltar-based company. And there is uh, N26 competition, which has strict to KYC AML process. It's a, I think it's startup from Berlin. Okay. And the third option, also very popular, is to use TransferWise. Also, uh, why, why use TransferWise? Because they didn't ask me for a proof of address. So I use only my passport uh, to, uh, to verify it on TransferWise. So it seems they are crypto friendly. So, so I, I, I did like a direct uh, withdrawals from uh, famous crypto exchanges directly to TransferWise and it worked. And also uh, you can find at their website that TransferWise Limited is a UK company and what is quite important, at this time, we are not reporting this information to HMRC or any other tax authority. So I don't know exactly what does it mean, but I hope that they really, or they should care about the privacy of their, of their customers. Okay, so, so now let's summarize. Oh, and, and there is another service which is called Bidwage. So, so now I, I showed you a lot of different services you can use to uh, pay um, your invoices or make SEPA payments or uh, like traditional fiat transaction. But you all, all, when you have a company, you also need the opposite. So you should be able to receive money from the customers who don't use crypto. And for this uh, reason, there is a service, service which is called Bitwage. And Bitwage uh, basically provides the opposite gateway. So it's not like a fiat crypto gateway, uh, but it's uh, crypto fiat gateway. So, uh, so they provide you like a temporary IBAN and SWIFT code. So you can issue the invoice to your customers. Uh, your customer just makes like a traditional SEPA payment and, uh, and they receive your money. They change it to, uh, they, they will change it to Bitcoin and you receive just pure Bitcoins. But the thing is that they, the KYC and AML process to op open the Bitwage is pretty difficult uh, because of like because otherwise this service may be used for for money laundering, and there is no similar anonymous service. You should be aware of that. Okay, another very interesting service is XMR.2, which is uh, anonymous service that can be used uh, also from the Tor or I2P network, uh, which basically mix your monitors with the BTC. Cool thing is that uh, all these BTC, you, you receive like a clean BTC, so BTC, Bitcoins which are not tainted, you know, so, so you should be able to, do, to use them. They have really good conversion rate and it's really stable service. So uh, especially if you use Bitcoin, you should be aware there are at least four or five different blockchain digital forensic uh, anal analysis companies uh, or agencies and uh, these company uh, these companies they can analyze your bitcoin transaction so i think especially mixing your bit bitcoins using uh, busb or xmr.2 is extremely important and inevitable okay another hack you can you can you can use 
I strongly recommend is just to change your tax permanent residency. So uh, the thing is that, for example, as I mentioned before, in Slovakia we have really bad legislation. In Slovakia, uh, you have to pay taxes from your profit from crypto. So, for example, now when Bitcoin is going up to 20,000 uh, euros, you have to you, you have to pay profit from your from uh, you have to pay taxes from your profit. But if you lose your money, you cannot use it, you cannot use it as your expense. So, so for all entrepreneurs, uh, all companies in Slovakia, it doesn't make sense at all to use cryptocurrencies. So especially because of this situation, um, it makes sense to change your tax residency to some other country. Like for example, me personally, because I don't spend like in any country more than half a year, I have no tax residency at all. I even don't have tax residency in Panama because I don't spend like a 183 days in Panama. So, so the thing is that when you change your residency, what you can do, you can register uh, to the centralized crypto exchanges like Kraken or Bitstamp, Bitstamp, Bitstamp Panamanian, uh, Panamanian residency. And in case that you change, for example, your, uh, your fiat or your crypto to fiat, uh, instead of your like, permanent residency, tax office, they will, they will contact residency in Panama. And because Panama is a territorial taxation country, and which means uh, they don't, uh, you don't need to pay any uh, taxes from, from local, uh, local income. Uh, it means that Panamian tax office, office, they just throw it away, uh, any, anything from crypto exchanges. Okay, so advantages of having residency, there are a lot of them. Okay, wait a moment. So let's switch to complete bankless setup. So, so if it is possible, uh, issue all your invoices to your customer using Bitwage. Prefer direct Bitcoin or monetary payments everywhere where it's, uh, where, it's, uh, where it's possible. Pay all your bills using services like Lamio, Simplecoin or Bitbill. And for the all other payments, use like a Bitcoin debit card. And, even, and if you expect more anonymous scenario, uh, this is like a bankless setup without uh, using KYC ML, I strongly recommend it to invoice your customer directly in Bitcoins and Monero. Monero. Always mix and receive bitcoins uh, using, uh, using Wasabi wallet or XMR.2. Uh, you should be able or you should pay all your invoices using services like Lamium and Bitbill that do not require any KYC, AML or any registration. And you should use cash all the time. So what, do you, what you, do, you, you should do, just visit Bitcoin ATM machine. For example, in Slovakia, you can exchange uh, you can, you can exchange your crypto bitcoins to cash up to 5,000 per day, which is uh, 5,000 5, euros per day, which is quite a lot. <laughs> and you should be aware that you, ne you, you should never use Revolut or N26 or any Bitcoin debit card because it's not anonymous. And I also, also strongly recommend you to change your permanent tax residency to territorial taxation country. Okay, so that's all. Privacy of the government, fiat money is that long life to anonymous cryptocurrencies. Thank you a lot for your attention. All right, go ahead. Thanks for a great talk. Uh, I would like to ask your opinion about uh, an anonym anonymity of liquid. So basically you can... Of what? Liquid sidechain by Blockstream. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have confidential transactions, so you can get Bitcoins into the liquid, do confidential transactions and get out. Uh, can you compare that to going into Monero or mixing or other stuff? Uh, to be sincere, I don't know. I, I didn't st study Liquid, but after this presentation, I will check it. So I have no idea. But the, what is crucial is that uh, you have to have like a big community, uh, which is necessary for mixing uh, transactions. You know, it's like Tor and I2P. Like I2P, like anonymization network is super cool, but there are only few nodes. And, and in case, uh, so, so from this point of view, Tor is always better because uh, it has a lot of exit nodes. And, and the same for uh, like mixing services, any cool mixing service, any anonymous, anonymous co coin does not make sense if it is used only by few people. Okay, some other questions? Okay. Thanks. Uh, so in Germany, the, um, Six months rule isn't isn't interpreted in the way you would think it is interpreted. 
183 days. Um, and I wonder if it's not actually the same in all of the EU. The way they interpret it is uh, by defining your center of life. Yeah, exactly. And the center of life is typically yep. where you stay more than half the time. Yep. But um, in fact, if you have, if you own a property, if you have a ch child living in that country, if that child goes to school, school, or even if you have just the key to an apartment there, they can define that as this is your actual center of life. Okay, very good question. And my answer is that, uh, so the thing is, you shouldn't own anything. Like for example, I'm like a homeless person. So, so uh, I sold everything to, uh, to my companies or you can, for example, if you want to be Panamanian resident, you can, you, can, you can sell everything to your Panamanian company. So as a physical person, you, you, you will own nothing basically. So, so you are pretty immune against seizure because the Romanian government, for example, cannot take your property which is owned by Panamanian company. So this is the first thing. Another thing, if you have children, of course, or you, okay, if you have if you have wife, you have to change the residency also for her, or just divorce. Two options. I recommend to divorce. <laughs> and 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 if you have children you also have to change the residency to panama panama and this is also super cool for people who who want to homeschool their children because normally um, for example in slovakian Czech republic we have like a mandatory education so all children they have to go to school but for example uh, for example if you have children and you change the residency to panama for here in romania they will be like children of tourists they can still visit romanian schools but because they want, not just because they must. This is a big difference because, because the, the Romanian government or any European governments cannot force children with a residence in Panama to go to school and it doesn't make sense. And this is super cool, especially in Panama because in Panama uh, you can homeschool your children. You, you just need to register your child to uh, any like a online uh, training course. You just need to print this like a receipt that you register and you paid for your online training course, you have to bring this receipt to the Panamian, Panamanian Ministry of Education, and that's all. So it's quite easy. So yeah, so you have like something like we just call center of your interest. So it means you have to sell everything, but, just, but you can sell it to your companies. And also uh, you need to do it with all your family. So, okay, any other questions? Last question. Thanks. Uh, very interesting talk. Um, I was wondering, um, is there any project uh, you are aware of that uh, make uh, some kind of uh, decentralized uh, stable coin that is a uh, privacy? Uh, yeah. On layer I one? mentioned it before. It's called, uh, okay, it's in progress. It doesn't yeah. exist yet, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's a ZK, it's ZK the, die. Uh, avoid a lot of frictions with the current uh, banking system yeah. that it's we have now. Yeah, it's yeah. ZK DAI. So it's basically DAI, yeah. like, oh, a, like, a make or dial pro, like make yeah. or dial DAI. Yeah, I know. And, and some people that are working on like encrypted version of DAI, which is called ZK DAI. Oh, that's so awesome. ZK DAI, it's doesn't exist, uh, it doesn't exist yet, but it should be like an encrypted uh, stable coin. Nice. Okay. okay. Thank you. Maybe last question, yeah. Wanted to ask you if it was uh, hard to get that uh, Panamanian uh, residence, did you need to go there? And what about other alternatives such as, I don't know, Georgia uh, country? Yeah, okay, a oh, very good question. So the thing is that there are many territorial taxation countries in the world, many, many. For example, even North Korea is territorial taxation country where weed is legal, for example. But you, want to, you, you don't want to go to North Korea. So, so, so the thing is that uh, Georgia is also a nice country where you can, which is territorial taxation country and you need, don't need to pay uh, uh, tax from your, for, from your for, uh, income or also Costa Rica, for example, or uh, Paraguay. So there are a lot of countries. The problem of especially Georgia or, or Costa Rica is that to get the permanent residence in Georgia or Costa Rica, you have uh, to buy some property there, some flat or house for 50, 100,000 euros, something like that. 
And also, you have to create a company, and this company, ne uh, this company has to have any economic act economical activity. But in Panama, nobody cares. In Panama, you don't need to buy anything, so you, you, you don't need to buy apartment or, or I don't know, house or anything. And also, you, you also need to create a Panamanian company, but you don't need to use this uh, company at all. It can be suspended all the time, that's all. So, yeah, there are many other options, but, but are definitely more expensive. Okay.